Hey everyone, have you wondered how to get the GPS location of a device from one of your users? Well, then this is the video for you. There's several ways to accomplish this. You can do it through IP address, you can do it, do it through the GPS, the device's location. We're gonna do it through that, and I'm gonna show you how to do that right now. So basically what we have here is just a button. Uh, there's no workflows set up to it yet. And when we click Start the Network Workflow, what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be working with a plugin. So it's this plugin, Geolocation, and if you go to Add Plugins and you type in GPS, you can find it here. It's for free. And uh, you'll note that there's some other ones though with more bells and whistles. Uh, that are paid options, and these are you know GPS based. Whereas there are also some other ones that are IP address based. So it, it looks at the IP uh, address of the device or the connection and uh, determines the location based on that. But for this one, we're going to be using this free plugin uh, with GPS capabilities to get the position and no continuous tracking. These are kind of two different things. In this one, we're really only going to look at a quick look at how to get the position itself. So. When someone clicks this button, what we, what we want to have happen, first off, you'll note that when you install this, you actually don't see any workflow items here. Why is that? Well, it's important to note that anytime you're working with plugins, perhaps you already know this, but perhaps some don't, you go, once you install it, check over on this visual elements area and grab the one that you just installed and then plop that onto the page somewhere. Plop it onto the page. Basically, here's kind of the rules. Um, it needs to be visible and it cannot be in a group that's hidden when you're trying to use it. So for example, this uh, enable location services one is visible, and so I've dropped it into this group, so that'll work just fine. And then, you know, a lot of times you can just uh, take it down to one by one so it doesn't mess with any uh, of the design and it's just kind of there doing its thing. That's just, that's just how plug plugins generally work in Bubble. But now, when we go over to our workflow area, we can see these new options under this GPS tracker. Sometimes it's under element action, sometimes it's under plugin, so just be sure to check both. It just depends on uh, how the plugin developer set it up or where it shows. So, uh, and then you can also, of course, an easy, fast way to do it is to just do a little search based on the keyword of your plugin. So with that set up, what we're gonna do, this is, this is just a video about getting the position itself. So we're gonna do that. And then over in my database, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a new data type and I'll call this the GPS uh, device location. And then you wanna make sure that that is a geographic address. And then we'll create that. And I'm tying that to the user record in this case because I wanna know where this user is. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm also going to, uh, I'm gonna create a test two. user, and then I'm gonna run it as that. So now I'm running this in the browser as this test2 user. And then uh, the next thing you wanna do with this particular plugin, it will go out and it'll do the thing with the device and the device will be like, here's the, here's the location, right? Um, but we wanna do something with that. We actually want to um, go store that into that database field. So another thing that is quite common, you know, when you're interacting with things uh, through plugins is that it'll have some kind of event that can be triggered when something happens. So for example, when a GPS data is updated. So we're gonna click that. And then one thing I like to do is I like to, when there's, note that there were two options there. There was an element when it's updated and when it's unavailable. So for this unavailable one, I'm just gonna say that this is red. So basically what happens is that it goes out and it tries to get it. And then if it was successful, sorry, if it was successful in getting it, it's this green one, then we're gonna do some stuff here. If it was not successful, then we'll just say, um, you know, maybe do, 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 full display. Uh, let's see, we'll just add a little alert, alert here. And We'll just say alert A, uh, couldn't find, or couldn't obtain GPS location. So you can see where this is going. Great. Okay, so uh, yeah, we're, we're just gonna handle that one right away. Show alert. Alert couldn't be obtained. So we'll show that in that case. But then in the case where it is, and then we'll actually, you know, we'll go ahead and 
We'll do a second alert and we'll just confirm to ourselves. And we'll insert some dynamic data. And what we'll do is GPS tracker A's. Let's see, if these are the fields that it's going to come back with. And we'll take latitude. And then we'll also take its longitude. So we, this is a this is just kind of setting up. This is not actually you know the go out and getting it. It just once we've gotten it, can we know okay so latitude and longitude so it looks like over in my data fields here for data types I'll need latitude and then so actually this should not be a geographic address so I'm going to delete that we're just going to store these as text my mistake in thinking that it came back with that, or rather numbers, latitude and longitude. Okay. So now let's take a look at our workflows. What's gonna happen? What's gonna happen is when it gets the position, we're going to data make changes to a thing. And the thing we're going to change, well, actually, well, we're going to change the current user, so let's just go directly to it. So account, make changes to the current user. And so we got latitude, we've got longitude. And then we're going to do the GPS tracker A's, latitude, heading, speed, timestamp, tracking status, great. And then... GPS tracker A's, uh, latitude, and then longitude. Okay, so now if we update this, and we're, no, we're still running this as a, as a test user two, and we're gonna watch this on a step-by-step -step basis here in our um, workflow. So I'm gonna hit enable location, run next, so it's gonna get it. Okay, so it wants to know the location. Here we are in a browser, and my, le my location preferences are turned off for this particular. So let's go with Google Chrome. Okay, so there we can actually see the case where it could not attain it. So now let's try it again. So that's actually great that it didn't work the first time because now we can see both scenarios. All right, so make changes to the user. Ah, you know what, I forgot to say, show the alert. But we can still see that it was successfully updated. Here, we refresh our data and, okay, so it seems like that did not happen. So let's go check out what May have been wrong, element actions, we'll do alert, show alert, and alert B. All right, so let's rerun this and let's see what we get. Okay, and you can see that the latitude and longitude were there. GPS location is this. And then we can see that over here in our data, if we refresh that. So what had happened there, it appears that um, the, the browser was just not you know, able to, to give the, uh, I didn't click that thing to allow it. So, but then what, one other thing that I also wanna show is that over on your mobile device, so I'll patch this in right after this, and we'll see on the mobile device the same exact thing, except we're gonna run it as test user one, and then we won't have all the, uh, well, so we'll just, we're gonna see that data get ported into here through a mobile device. So see you over there. So here we are over in the mobile device, and what I wanna point out is that we are in Safari, and I am on an iPhone. In Safari, 
by the default behavior of it, it will actually not allow the GPS locations to be, it, it won't show the pop-up just by default. That's how Apple has set up the technology. So what, what I wanna show is that over in, here in, um, in Chrome, now I've got this special link that's allowing me to log in. So basically you, you'll need to log into your app or your bubble account, and then you'll need to grab. So when you do this uh, run as from the database, you get this link and I've copied and pasted it over so that uh, to my device so that I can uh, be logged in as this test user one. So real quick, we're gonna see how to get that link so that you can get that over into your mobile device for your testing purposes. So basically, once you have this entry, what I'm gonna do is as soon as I hit this, Okay, so it looks like we actually want to uh, close out any preview, any preview window that you may have previously had up. Click that. Okay, you can see that link, how it changes pretty quickly. And it looks like I missed it on that one. So it might take it a try or two, but I believe I got it there. Okay, so in this case, I've got this particular link, which only works for anyone that is so, you know, anyone can just grab, kind of grab this. You could type this all out and try and go to it, but it's going to say an error that you cannot log into it. It only works uh, and authenticates when you're logged into the, the bubble editor that uh, is your particular back end. So then you can just take that link, pass it over to your mobile device, so that way you're logged in as one of these test users, so you can see that the data and the activity from your mobile, uh, your work over on the mobile device actually you know, corresponds back to what's happening here in the database. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click enable location services. We can see that it would like to uh, use our current location and we say, okay, go for it. And so here it is, our location. We can see that it's successfully grabbed there. And then now let's look back over in our database at what we have for that data. So after having tested out getting the GPS location over in our mobile device, let's go ahead and I'm gonna refresh this data. We see that there is no device location for test user one. And then we can see there, boom, it is for, um, it's now filled in. So that is how you can go and grab the, the device location. Now, if you want to know how to turn the latitude and longitude coordinates into an actual geographic address so you can have city, state, and display information like that, then in a future video, check that out. It'll be linked to below. But the great thing about having things in latitude and longitude is you can use those to calculate distances between two points. So for example, let's pretend there are two uh, sports leagues on an app and they want to play people only within their area or a dating app where they want to see potential dates only within an area when it's when the data is in the format of latitude and longitude you can use those to calculate the uh, distances very easily between two points so hope you enjoyed if you did please like or subscribe and i'll see you in the next video